Hey everybody, it's E Chip and Robber. Hi. And we are playing catch up. We have had such a busy spring between work and all the things we've had going, Dinah, the issues with that, getting location two sold, uh, and working on that property. We have just been, I mean, we don't know whether we're coming or going, but we finally had an opportunity <clears throat> to sit down and work on a proper video. <laughs> Some people have been asking where we've been and we just really have not had time to make a video. I teach, come home, <clears throat> do projects, go to bed 11, 12 o'clock, get yeah. up, do the same thing over and over and over again every day. Yeah. And on the weekends too, of course, if we're up at like six and we start the projects fairly early in the morning and by the time we get home, we're super tired and we don't feel like making videos. So that's kind of part of the reason why we've been um, not visible. It's been a very challenging spring. We've been fighting issues with Dinah and her engine. We've been fighting issues with the cameras. Um, we've been fighting issues with schedules and work and everything that keeps us uh, you know, we're fighting everything that seems to be keeping us from getting to contentment uh, this summer. But that's our goal is to be out there this summer uh, beginning to break ground and do some important work there on site. And of course, Dinah and Buzz are a big part of that. And so we're trying desperately to get Dinah done uh, so we can get her out there. Don't know, really don't think it's going to happen at this point. Every time we get something together and we have it... A positive step once we start putting things together and moving forward something else comes up and of course that's partial that's partially because she's such an old little thing but well I don't know maybe that's about all yeah. <laughs> but she's pretty old so but other than that I think that it's been a pretty good project we've said it before this backhoe is not gonna give up uh, her slumber easily. I mean, uh, I think so far I've torn off probably 30 square inches of skin on my hands and arms, um, you know, between knuckles, palms, and everything else. Um, ruined several shirts and pairs of pants, um, broken several tools, and, you know, I mean, it's just been, it's been an enormous challenge. I've been really kind of sad about it because I haven't been able to help that much because I'm still in school. And so I come, when I get home, I'm like, what's going to, what can I do? What can I do? And, and it's kind of almost to the point where it's a one person job. And so I'm, I'm kind of sad. I'm ready for another project. I already told Egypt that uh, not, I'm over this. <laughs> Dinah's not even half done. And I know. <laughs> ready for another project. I feel like I'm not being very <clears throat> much help. Well, and of course, we've discussed that. I mean, you could be helping us get ready to go. <laughs> but um, yeah, but I don't which, even know where to begin doing yeah, that that's either. Another, that's another. That's a project in itself. <clears throat> um, but anyway, we have some video for you. Uh, where we're at now is that over the past six months, we have tried to get Dinah's engine, um, you know, put back together, rebuilt. Dinah has been to three machine shops f a total of four times. And uh, so, I mean, it's just been a constant challenge with this engine. Finding, finding the parts... Um, has been difficult at times, certain of the parts. It's been like a giant Easter egg hunt, um, you know, finding the engine parts and other things we need to, uh, to help Dinah get to running again. I still have not worked on that ugly, ugly gearbox transmission that needs to be helped, but I have started to disassemble it and look at the parts I need to rebuild it. I don't expect that part of the project to take very long. That's why I've waited on it. But the engine is reassembled, and we'll show you some video on that coming up. Uh, the engine block is back in Dyna. We've tested the oil pressure. It looks good. And now we're to the point where we're just about ready to fire it up. And uh, we're running into some challenges with that. We have an all-new ignition system for it. 
and uh, well, let's just say I'm going to need I'm going to need somebody to come in and, and help me because I'm I'm beyond uh, frustrated in trying to get this engine to fire up. I, I you know usually with an engine it's one of three things: spark, gasoline, or timing, and so far, all three of those look fine, but for some reason or another, she won't fire up and stay running. So, anyway, we'll show you where we're at to this point, and then hopefully, after these videos coming up, the next one you'll see is her running. So, we're really looking forward to that. Um, we've worked hard to make sure that that engine is put back together correctly and uh, done well, and, you know... The last thing we want to do is have to have put all of this time, effort, and treasure into this thing and it not work for us. So, anyway, we appreciate your patience. Thank you so much for your loyalty to this channel and for sticking with us. <clears throat> if this is your first time seeing us, please click the uh, bell and subscribe and stay tuned uh, because we have some more fun things coming up, particularly when we get to contentment. Tell them about what we're going to do is con contentment this summer. Work, 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 work. <clears throat> no, well, we've already got our plans made for our temporary housing. And that took a little bit of discussion. We changed our mind several times on what we were going to do when we get out there. But we've got that squared away. And... That's what I that's what I want to go do because I that to me I think is a project easy enough for me to do by myself so he can do something else. Oh great. And we can You're going to build it all yourself. That's awesome. Well, I could for sure cut the wood, for sure. Okay. No, I could do that probably. <clears throat> um but then that way it frees us up to maybe do both do something instead of I don't know, maximize more of our labor. Mm -hmm. I don't know. She's an expert carpenter now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm an expert at what is it? A jack of all trades, but an expert at master, none. Of, none. master of none. Yes. So, what else are we going to do? The contentment. We have to make. We have to get Dinah going. What else? Is that what you're talking about? We have to get I mean, Dinah going. I, I guess that means we're going to drag Dinah out there with us, whether or not she's running and finish the job out there. I'm Buzz, we're going to have to make about, about 20 trips, I think. So we have to get Buzz out there. Dinah's going to have to get out there. Um, but yeah, we're going to go set up a temporary shelter, start breaking ground. We're going to hopefully get the septic tank in and whatever the, the minimum, well. the well, you know, the very minimum things we can do this summer to get it, um, to where we can actually make the fun stuff next summer. And then, and, and then what are we going to do? I'm making, what? I don't know. I know what I'm doing. What are you doing? I'm making my Orno breaks this summer. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> That's what I'm the first thing I'm doing. I'm making an Orno the very first thing. You know, <laughs> like the, the, something that's absolutely <laughs> totally unneeded. <laughs> <But I'm laughs> Call us Pure Living for Life. You know how they build first thing they did on their property is build a jacuzzi. <laughs> but we're building an Orno. <laughs> hey, that's a use of <clears throat> At least it gives us food. <laughs> yeah, but I want one. <laughs> What else are we going to do? I'm not following you. No, just the things we have planned. That's all I have planned. I'm going to build our temporary house and make more no bricks. And maybe we can get started on a small shop. Maybe, if there's time. We'll we see. have to dig a whole bunch. We do. I'm not doing and that. And that means we need Dinah. So. I think I've decided that he gets to drive the backhoe on the hill. Hmm. Yeah. But it's going to be fun. I am about to go completely crazy. Why? Because I don't want to be here. <laughs> anyway, folks. Edit that part out. Okay. <laughs> anyway, folks, thanks for, uh, thanks for your patience with us. Thanks for watching. We do appreciate you. And we love your comments. Uh, we read every one of them. And uh, we, we get to them as quickly as we can, and we try to respond to everyone in some form or fashion, even if it's just hitting that little heart symbol. Uh, so please keep them coming, and uh, we appreciate you. Hey, folks, it's E. Chip and Robert at Location 2. It's a beautiful day, and we're out here to sort of uh, prep the backhoe to take its engine back. Um, we got a lot of things to do today. We've got to see if we can clean out the gas tank. Um, 
we've got to paint. We won't be able to paint the whole backhoe, but just the interior of the engine depart, uh, uh, compartment so that we can put the engine back in and uh, there'll be some prep, you know, be cleaning up parts and prime and painting those. So that's our day to day. Stick with us. Still morning. So this is the gas tank for the backhoe. We've gone over it, it's kind of rusted out. It's an old, it used to be galvanized and uh, over the years it's just rusted out, but it's still heavy enough and apparently holds uh, fluid. So uh, we uh, took a grinder to it, tried to get as much of this rust off. We'll wipe it down and then paint it. But uh, we also dumped uh, a whole bunch of acetone in this thing and we're gonna drop some angular uh, rocks in there to help scour it out. So we've got the acetone in there, we'll drop the rocks in, we'll agitate this, scour the uh, tank out, and then pour it out. We've got exactly 100 stones, and we need to make sure exactly 100 stones come out of this thing so that we uh, you know, don't leave something in there and cause a problem. I think so. we should count them as we put them in so we can be doubly 95, sure. 96, 97, 98, 99. One more, Robber, 100, ready? Yes. Let's just pick this up and shake it. Ready? Ooh. Back, you know, toward, back, forth like this. Water. Rust. You don't even know. That's using solar power from Buzz, folks. So we made some new wind chimes. <laughs> the wind's not blowing now. You can still hear them clanging sometimes. There it goes. <laughs> Let's go ahead and hit them. <laughs> So here's what we've done with Dinah, nice yellow, New Holland yellow paint. Uh, we've started on, I had to get that engine compartment ready for the engine. Here's the nose casting, we got it off and painted. And then uh, several other pieces over here. Both the, uh, this is the oil cooler here, uh, which uh, we had taken to a radiator shop, pressure tested and boiled uh, or uh, cleaned out. And uh, this checks out just fine, nothing wrong with it. On this side is the transmission cooler, and on this side is the hydraulic oil cooler. Uh, we've got the gas tank and some of the floor plates uh, for the dynaho. Up next would be the hood here and dash elements. We've got to get that painted and uh, 
so we can get it all put back together once the engine's ready to come. I just got through uh, uh, cutting and grinding a uh, metal plate to go on the, uh, the Continental F244 engine for this backhoe. We're switching out the old mechanical fuel pump for an electric one, and so we needed this plate to cover the hole where the old mechanical one was on the engine block, so got that done. Here's the radiator. Uh, radiator's had some work done to it, obviously. It's had some repairs in the past. You can see right there where somebody soldered something. Apparently, in the past, something flew into the fan or something and uh, just chewed this radiator up, but it's it's been repaired. It seems to be doing fine. Uh, it was boiled and pressure tested and seems to be uh, uh, doing just fine. So we'll put it back in as it is, but one thing I do need to do is uh, attach another bolt. We have one bolt here that's original, uh, but uh, one here that got uh, rusted and broken off when we were removing it. So I got to glue a new one on. I'm going to use just use JB Weld because I don't think JB Weld rusts. But uh, I have my um, I have my new uh, blank here that I'll put in, and we'll get this done. It's a ring compressor. It compresses the ring so you can fit it in the... Scrunches them down. Oh, that one popped in. I want to put this on. Okay, is it on me? Mm -hmm. This is a ring compressor. So what we're going to do is put this piston inside this motor block thing and then you put this on it and you screw it down and it makes those little loosey-goosey things tight and it goes in. So it'll fit. Yes, that's what I'm doing. Okay. But let's lubricate it first. Well, and you want to make sure you put some sort of lubrication on it so it slides in more easily. Let's clean it up nice and clean. Make sure it's good to go. So we're just using some oil here. Not magic mystery oil. I feel like I'm decorating the cake for me. Okay, especially on the rings. Um, Particularly on the first and second rings. Don't put that on your hands. Lots of good oil. Now let's lubricate the cylinder too. Drizzle a bunch in there and wipe it around with your hand. Make sure you get good coverage. Okay. And then while you do that, I will stagger the gaps in these rings. Way inside to the inside. Yeah, go down. Alright. And then let's also lubricate wrong bearings. Now you see how this is staggered? You mm -hmm. have to make sure when you look down the cylinder here that it lines up. Okay. Some of these are what they call left hand, some are right hand. Okay, so since he wasn't doing it, you have to make sure these left right things, I don't know what, but these are left right deals. And you have to make sure they line up inside this thing so it gets onto the journal mm -hmm. the right way. So each of already kind of helped line it up. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Okay. Earlier we installed the valves and the little springs and the whatever else. <laughs> what did you call them? Lifters. Lifters. So, valves, lifters, couplets, pin, pins. No, not couplets. Collets. Collets. Couplet, like Shakespearean mm -hmm. couplet. 
bad I can't see in here like this at you. I can. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, here's the uh, assembled crankshaft and oil pump installed. Uh, these uh, particular castle nuts take cotter pins, and these uh, uh, crank caps uh, take some kind of wire uh, reinforcement in case they spin off and fall down the engine, lose the cap, all that fun stuff. So we are ready to go ahead and place the uh, rear main, bottom half of the rear main seal, and. Uh, get the oil pan on this thing. So let's do it. Oil pan! Oil pan! Ta-da! Is that gasket okay? It's all wobbly looking. Where? See, it's bow, like ribbed. Eric. Uh, wavy. We'll have to straighten out and tighten it down as we go. Yes. So we've got the block put back together. Uh, Robber torqued down all the head bolts. We put the head on, she torqued down the head bolts. You have to do it in a weird pattern. Mm -hmm. You do. Start in the middle and sort of work your way out as you go in, in a couple of stages. We also have uh, adjusted all the valves and we are preparing to install the bypass oil filter system and a sensor so that we can test the oil pressure on this. Uh, we at least want to make sure that's good before we um, try to run it, make sure we've got good oil pressure or anything. And uh, when do we go?